It's time for Wave 3 Listens Live. Taking your calls to hear what you have to say on Kentucky and his first live local TV calling. talk show. And hitting the streets to be live on location in your community. All hosted by Cindy Sullivan. This is Wave 3 Listens Live. Morning, everybody. Welcome to Wave 3 Listens Live. Thanks so much for joining us this Tuesday morning. I told you yesterday we have a full week planned of really interesting, exciting, and educational programming for Listens Live all this week. And today you're going to learn something. I absolutely guarantee you. You're going to learn something about your car insurance that I bet you never thought about or never occurred to you. Mike Schaefer is joining us today. Of course, he's a, a local attorney here, and he's here to answer your questions. Mike can take your um, calls as we go through the hour. Our telephone number is 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. That's the toll-free number. And um, Mike, you have been here in Louisville all been your life. Here my, well, <laughs> since high school I've been here. Okay. I'm, a, I'm a transplant plant from Ohio, but uh, started high school here, so I consider myself a local boy now. Okay, and your office is downtown on 7th Street uh, for now. That's correct. I'm at 440 South 7th Street. We're uh, half a block from the courthouse, but we will be moving sometime around the first of the year down to Old Louisville where we are in the process of purchasing a building. So you've been practicing for a number of years already. Uh, more than I can count. Okay, well we'll about, just leave it at 22, that. About 22, I believe. Here's Mike's uh, contact information. As we go through the hour, if you decide that you want to talk to him personally, you can just uh, give him a call at this number, 584-9511. You can also use the 800 number. It's an 855 number for you are hurt. And then you can also go online, MikeShaferLaw.com. That's the website, and there's lots and lots of information there about Mike and, and what he is not, what's the word that I can't use? Concentrates in. What he concentrates in. <laughs> what he concentrates in. You're doing good. <laughs> Try and, I'm trying to be um, politically correct and, and use the proper vernacular here That's for, right. for, these, for these lawyers. So what we're going to talk about today in particular, you are actually, in addition to practicing law daily, you have uh, written several books. That's correct, I have. And today, the one that we're going to discuss is the one um, about car insurance, and it's called What You Don't Know About Buying Car Insurance Can Hurt You. And I guarantee to you, as I said before, there are some things that you haven't thought about when you're purchasing your car insurance, and we're going to go through these um, kind of items as as we go through the hour. And of course, as I said, Mike can take your calls if you've got questions about being in an accident, absolutely, on um, that sort of thing. So, um, so let's start out and talk about these things that really caught my eye. Okay. On the list, I'm going to kind of jump around on you, Mike. I'm sorry. Uh -oh. <laughs> because because here's one that I thought that was kind of interesting. What happens if I am riding my bicycle or walking or if I'm standing on the side of the road and I get hit by a car. Is my car insurance going to cover me on that? Your car insurance should cover you depending on the type of car insurance you have, Cindy. There's several different types of coverages you can have. One is personal injury protection or no-fault benefits which cover your medical bills. Mm -hmm. uh, those will be covered by the car that hit you if that okay. car had insurance. Also, your personal car insurance, you will have something called uninsured motorist coverage, or mm -hmm. you should have, not everybody has that, but mm -hmm. you should have uninsured motor motorist coverage or underinsured motorist coverage, and those insurance coverages will cover you if the insurance for the person that hit you, assuming that it wasn't your fault, you didn't jump out in front of the car or anything, right. if their insurance is not adequate to uh, compensate you for your injuries. Okay, and these are important questions. Oh, absolutely. Uh, the reason I wrote this book, and a lot of people might think, why do, is a, an attorney writing a book about car insurance? Yeah. But what's happened is, during the course of my career, I have people come into my office that are seriously injured, that I have to tell them there's nothing I can do for them because the person that hit them did not have coverage and the person that has been injured only had the bare bones coverage. Right. So people need to take responsibility today in reference to their insurance coverage to protect their family should they ever be in a car accident. You can't do it after you've been in a car accident. You need to think ahead and this is something you don't want to think about. You right. don't want to think about what happens if I've been seriously injured in a car accident? That's just, you know, that, that's something we want to keep out of our mind. It's like preparing a will. You don't want to do it, right? <laughs> but it is something, that. <laughs> it's something very important to do, and right. everybody should take a look at their insurance coverage 
and uh, make sure they have adequate coverage. And one thing I will do, if anybody, any of our li listeners today will send me a copy of their declarations page, I will give them my recommendations on how to increase their coverage to make sure that they'd be taken care of if they are in a serious car accident. Okay. And we're... And I guess it's, I mean, obviously the, the, the worst case scenario is if you're in a serious car accident and, you, and you've got major injuries. That's correct. But there are all those little things, too. Here's a personal story. My daughter comes home, comes over yesterday, and I says, well, what would you do this weekend? So she starts telling me she went to Target and she got this and this and this. And uh, that was kind of the end of the story. And then a few minutes later, and she goes, oh, um, by the way, while I was at Target, I did have a little fender bender. <laughs> so, so, Mike, I mean, it's, it's a situation where depending on what her coverage is. That's you know, correct. She, you know, she said, it, you know, it was just a little scratch on the guy's car. Um, so I told him if I don't have to use my insurance, and I said, well, honey, if, you're, if you've got $500 deductible, you're going to be paying for it anyway. Right, and that's what you should do. I mean, if it's a very minor uh, inj or damage to the car, there's no personal injury, you can take care of it by paying for the uh, property damage personally. And that's the best way to do it because nowadays your insurance premiums are gonna go up mm -hmm. based on claims mm -hmm. and it depends on your insurance company whether or not some of them raise it just because you've been in an accident whether it's your fault or not. You know, right. you can make a claim for your window uh, ha having a rock hit it and they're gonna raise your rates because it counts as a claim. Some of them are occurrence-based and some of them are fault-based. So you wanna be conscious of that and you don't wanna report every minor little thing like that. Right, gotcha. Okay, so Mike Schaefer, attorney at law, is here today in the studio to take your calls. If you've got questions for Mike, if you've been injured in an accident and you want some advice, 571-5263 is our telephone number, 888-800-9283 is the toll-free number. And here real soon, we're going to tell you how you can get a, a free publication from Mike. And we've also got some movie tickets to Anonymous we're going to give away later on in the show. So stay with us. We'll be right back with Listen Five. Welcome back to Way 3 Listens Live. Thank you so much for joining us today. Michael Schaefer, attorney at law, is in the studio with us today, and he's taking your calls if you've got questions. He concentrates in... Personal injury. I, I handle cases where somebody has been hurt or injured by the negligence or wrongdoing of someone else. So okay. if you've been hurt by someone else's uh, acts, you should give us a call to see whether or not there's something that can be done about it. Okay. And of course, that telephone number is 855 4 you are hurt It's you are just the letters. And you can also go online, Michael Schaefer, MikeSchaeferLaw.com. And we, we're taking your calls. We're going to, Laura's, Laura's been on the line here for a little bit. We'll go ahead and talk to Laura before we talk about more insurance. <clears throat> Laura, Hi. how are you doing today? Hi, fine. How are you? Just fine, thanks. Uh, uh, Mr. Schaefer, I have a question. Okay. Um, well, I will probably want to come in and see you. I've had a friend who's been uh, involved in a car accident. Okay. Uh, the driver walked away. However, my friend is paralyzed from the waist down. Oh, no. Medical bills are <laughs> unbelievable at this point, but um, he's going through extensive rehab and was stat flighted down to Vanderbilt. What Are there any other ways around, like the insurance, if you have minimum state coverage? What can someone do when you just have minimum coverage? and you're going to have medical bills exceeding into the six figures? Well, there may not be a really good answer for you, Laura, um, but there are a lot of things to look at. We need to look at what the insurance coverage was on the person that hit your friend. We need to look at whether or not they had something called an umbrella policy, which uh, is a insurance policy that takes care of liability or damages uh, in excess of your car insurance policy. And we also want to look at, if they don't have either of those things, what their assets are. It may be a situation where there is not insurance coverage, but the person is that did the damage is still liable, and we want to see what type of assets they, uh, they have, whether or not there's a house or any uh, pension funds, that sort of thing that we can attach should we get a judgment. Uh, the other thing is there's also a lot of um, assistance, medical assistance funds, and if he qualifies for Medicare or Medicaid, uh, they may backdate it where he can, uh, where he can, you know, have those bills paid. And also, a lot of the state hospitals, which I think Vanderbilt is, uh, will 
uh, waive uh, a lot of the fees for indigent people. But definitely uh, give my office a call and set up an appointment and we can go into these options a little bit further for you. Thank you so much for the call, Laura. We do appreciate it. And that kind of gets into the different types of, of insurance because you mentioned in addition to your car insurance, right. there are other ways that you can access funds if that's not going to cover it, a personal liability, a personal umbrella policy, for that's, instance. That's correct, and that protects <coughs> you if you're the person that causes mm -hmm. the damage, that umbrella policy. So if you had a, and most um, uh, umbrella policies aren't sold unless you have at least a $100,000 of liability insurance, but if the injuries were greater than that, then you have an umbrella policy, then that would protect you, it would protect your house from uh, being attached in that instance. Umbrella insurance is one of the cheapest insurance out there, and I recommend everybody call their insurance agent and uh, get at least a million dollar coverage. It's only okay. going to cost less than $200 a year in most instances. Wow. So. And probably worth it. Absolutely. Although you go through those little things with insurance, you know, and you think, you know, it's, it, what, <laughs> what if? What if nothing ever happens and I'm spending all this money on insurance, all these different policies, and, and what? But you, but you have to have it because that's why they call it insurance, Well, right? it, it, it's just in case. I mean, right. if you have enough money to pay a million dollar judgment, should you be in an accident and right. it's not going to hurt you, it's not going to cause you to miss your mortgage payment, then yeah. you wouldn't need insurance. <laughs> but it's, a, it's, a, it's paying a little bit now just to make sure you don't have to pay a lot later. Gotcha. And uh, I, I'm a big proponent of uh, taking care of yourself. And, and here's the reason, Cindy. It's up to you to protect your family. Sure. If you can't work because you were in an accident, right. the other, in today's economy, the other driver may not have insurance, mm -hmm. and they're probably going to have the state minimum coverage, which in Kentucky is only $25,000. And $25,000, yeah, that's Just exactly like that. it. It's gone, it's gone in a flash. So you want to make sure you have the coverages like underinsured motorist coverage and uninsured motorist coverage. So just in case that person doesn't have insurance, you can be compensated for your injuries, whether they're minor or serious, like uh, Laura's friend who's having this problem right now. Okay, so if you haven't learned anything in the last 15 minutes, you know that you need to call your insurance agent and make sure that you've got adequate coverage. Absolutely. Including the coverage for your car, underinsured or, or uninsured motorist, and a personal li Umbrella policy. Umbrella. And the one thing that I will uh, do, Cindy, for your listeners is if they send, go to my website, if they send you an e send me an email, I'm sorry, if they okay. send me an email with their, uh, with their declarations page attached, which is their listing of coverages, I will give them recommendations on what okay. I think they should do as far as increasing their coverages. Okay. And uh, what, what's interesting is when you increase your coverage, your payment doesn't go up as much as you would think. If you increase your liability coverage from 50000 to 500000 and you're paying 200 for that $50,000 coverage, mm -hmm. it's not going to go up to $2,000 for that six-month period. It's probably only going to go up to $280. Gotcha. It's not exponential like you would think. So ask your insurance agent how much it would cost if I raise my coverage. Okay, because it could be a lot cheaper than you think. A lot cheaper than you think. Absolutely. Okay. All right, well, we've got Anna and Linda and Boyd and Cindy um, hanging on the line right here, but we'll go ahead and take a real quick break, and then we promise we'll get right to your calls. Okay. If you've got a question for Mike Schaefer, 571-5263 is our telephone number. We'll be right back to Listen Live. Stay with us. Welcome back to Listens Live. Today, Mike Schaefer is joining us in the studio. He's an attorney here in Louisville and concentrates in <laughs> personal injury. It's hard and, word to get, isn't it? <laughs> well, you know, it's just, it's just the vernacular, that's all. <laughs> so we're going to get back to your phone calls. We're going to go to Anna calling from PRP. Anna, did you have a question for Mike? Yes, I was in an accident. It's not about insurance, but well, I had good insurance. Well, that's good. But, but um, my um, my... The driver's license was taken away from me, and well, I'll probably never get it back because the doctors think I'm too old. I was 85 at the time. I'm 86 now, and I'm not getting any younger. <laughs> well, congratulations on that. What, what is your question, Anna? Well, how do I go about getting my driver's license? 
I've been a passenger for over a year, and in my opinion, I'm a better driver than most of them out there. <laughs> well, why, why did they take your license from you, Anna? Well, my, my children took me to court. They were concerned about me. My oh. husband had died, and I was in the grieving process, and I was oh. told, you know, get out and do things. Right. And, and that's what I was trying to do when I had this trick. I was the only one involved. Okay. And, and so the children, I guess, trying to save me from myself, took me to court. Well, what, what, what you're going to have to do, Anna, is in order to get that ba back, since there's a court order, you would have to go back to court and get a, uh, make a motion to that judge for him to reinstate your license so you can go back down and take your test. But since that process has been initiated, you need to go to uh, back to the courthouse to get that done, unfortunately. Anna, you bring up a really good point, too, because there are a lot of, of uh, children that are very concerned about their older parents that are out there driving, and I, I've been there, done that, and maybe just realize that your children are trying to do the best for you and let, let them take care of you for a change. <laughs> Thanks, Anna, so much that's, for the call. I do appreciate that's it. That's a good point. Tough situation to be in, it that's really for sure. It really is. I know it is. I know it's a very tough situation, but you... Sometimes you just got to do what your kids tell you to do, Anna. Thank you so much for the call. Let's go to Linda. Hey, Linda. Yes. Do you have a question for Mike? Yes, I do. My stepdaughter got killed in an automobile accident on, on June the 2nd of this year. I'm so sorry and to hear that. That's okay. The driver had no insurance. There is no insurance. So they told my uh, son-in-law that he had to go see an attorney. He went and see an attorney. They're saying that the driver did not do anything unlawful because he turned in front of her and she hit him and it killed her at the site. She died at the site. Oh. And he has no insurance. They're not going to do anything. The car is still compounded. We can't see it or get it or anything. And, it, and they said they're, they're going to have to sue their insurance company because the other guy didn't have any. And he's not done anything unlawful. And I thought maybe that you would have... Um, what you call it, manslaughter at least, or something, but they're saying no. Well, manslaughter would be a criminal act, and there would have to be some sort of wanton or wanton conduct for there to be a manslaughter charge. So they're probably correct on that because accidents do happen, and they're very, very unfortunate, especially in this case. But I would definitely get a second opinion, give our office a call because there's several things that need to be looked at. We need to look at whether or not there was, uh, in fact, insurance on the car. We can do a search through the Department of Motor Vehicles to make sure that what uh, has been told to your uh, son is correct. We can look at the assets of the person that hit um, and uh, killed your daughter-in-law. And we can also look at the insurance coverages that are available in the household, either that your son had your daughter-in-law had or anybody that they lived with. So there are some options that we can look at. It just needs to be investigated. And I urge anybody, if, they're, uh, if they get turned down by one attorney, always get a second opinion just to make sure that you don't have any uh, legal basis to stand on and your rights are being protected. Let me go ahead and give you that number again, Linda, at Mike's office. It's 584-9511 if you want to call, or you can always go online, mikeshaferlaw.com. The website is right up there at the bottom of your screen. You can, you can jot that down. Thanks for the call, Linda. I'm very sorry about your loss. Thanks for the call. We're going to go now to Boyd, calling from Louisville. Hi, Boyd. Hello. Morning, Boyd. Morning. I have a question. Uh, I have a, an adult son living with me. He... Uh, has his own car, it's in his name, and he has his own insurance, but he's, he's in my home. Am I, am I liable for anything that happens in his car? Uh, how, how old is he? He's, he's, a, he's adult. He's, he's, over, he's 40 years old. Is your name on the car in any way? No. No. I mean, there, there shouldn't be any issues whatsoever uh, with that. Uh, what I would do is, this is one of those situations where an umbrella policy is very smart insurance just in case uh, somebody tries to um, bring charges or bring a case against you because of what your son did, the umbrella policy would cover attorney's fees and cover any judgment that would be brought. So 
you know, you, you probably have nothing to worry about, but that umbrella insurance policy would be a great, great thing to check into for you. Okay. Well, he is, see, he is my heir, so. That, that really, that doesn't make any difference as long as you're not uh, financially responsible for him. Okay. So, uh, as long as you're not doing anything to take care of the car, the car's not in your name, uh, and he's not under your control, he's just living with you and you're not sharing the same insurance policy, uh, there's pro you're probably okay. But like I said, there's a lot of weird situations that can arise in the law, and an umbrella policy is always, always uh, a good thing to have. I highly recommend that to everybody. All right, Boyd, thank you so much for the call. We do appreciate it. That brings up another question, too, about different insurances, Mike. What about health insurance? If I'm involved in a car accident, will my health insurance cover me? It, it will. They're, the first thing that you have is the first thing that will take care of your medical bills for injuries from an accident is your personal injury protection or no-fault benefits. That is $10,000. Now you can raise that and if you don't have health insurance or have a very high deductible, I would suggest that you call your insurance agent to raise that. It's called added reparations benefits. The 10000 is called basic reparations okay. benefits. But once those $10,000 is exhausted, then your health insurance kicks in and they will start paying your bills. Now, if somebody else caused the accident, when you get your settlement or it goes to trial and you get a verdict, your insurance company has subrogation rights is what it's called and you have to reimburse them out of the proceeds of the accident. You can't get reimbursed twice. You're going to get compensated for those medical bills, but then you have to pay your insurance company back. And it's not always a bad deal because uh, if the insurance company gets billed for $100, you've, you've seen your, uh, your uh, EOB coming in, it's, you, they might only pay $33 on that. Right. So you only have sure. to pay back what the insurance company actually paid. Okay, gotcha. All right, we're going to go ahead and take a real quick break. We've got uh, Misty and Cindy hanging on the line, and if you've got a question for Michael Schaefer, attorney at law, go ahead and give us a call right now. We'll get you all lined up. 571-5263. We'll be right back with Listen Live. And now we're going to get back to uh, today's time. We're talking about uh, personal injury. And if you've got questions about that, Mike Schaefer is in the studio today to take your calls. And, and I promised Misty and, and uh, Cindy that we'd get right to them. So we're going to go back to the phones. Hey, Misty, you have a question? Hi. Hey. Hi, Misty. Yes, I have a, hi, how are you? I'm doing well. What can we do for you today? Um, I have a question. My son bought a car. And before he was able to transfer into his name or get insurance on it, he had a wreck. So um, he is claiming, you know, the wreck, it, is his, it was his fault, and he is not, of course, going to push it on the person that he bought the car from. My question is, the insurance company is now, I guess what you mentioned earlier, segregation, I believe. Subrogation, but, right. Yeah, they are um, wanting the, I think it's $18,000. Right. He, we have been in contact with, he's 18, so of course they don't really work with me. He um, is offering them, you know, to pay, oh, look, I know I owe this, and I want to pay you $100 a month or $200 a month to get it paid off. They will not accept the payment because they want a $5,000 down payment, which he does not have. Okay. Well, the first thing, uh, I know that you don't want to put it on the person that sold him the car, but if there was insurance <laughs> on the vehicle, uh, that at the time when it was bought before it was transferred and I would never uh, take my insurance off a car before it is transferred there may be coverage there that you can get to you may also want to look to see if under your policy or his policy on a previous car there may be some coverage there that would um, uh, would be valid and covered now as to your question about the five thousand dollars there once they have a judgment, it's only what they agree to. So if, if they don't want to take the $200 a month without a $5,000 uh, lump sum payment at the front, there's really nothing you can do to force them. Uh, the unfortunate part about that, if there is a judgment against your son for this amount, if that's turned over to the Department of Motor Vehicles down in Frankfurt, 
uh, his light or the Department of Transportation, his license will be suspended until he makes arrangements to pay that judgment off or does pay it off. So I would try to work with that, but I would also want to look at all the coverages just to make sure that there isn't something that would have taken or can take care of this. I would leave every, I would look under every rock, so to speak. Now, is that one of those situations, Mike, where your umbrella policy might be able to come into play? That it, it could uh, in that situation, but since you did not have the coverage, the coverage. Uh, it would not. So there, there should have been coverage there. It would take care of any excess coverage if, uh, gotcha. if that was a situation. All right. Best of luck, Misty. Mm -mm -mm. Children. <laughs> Let's go now to Sharon. Oh, I'm sorry, Cindy. We'll get to you in a second. Let me go to Sharon first here real quick. Hey, Sharon. Hi, Sharon. Yeah, good morning. Morning. What can we do for you? Um, my son was visiting some uh, friends of his at an apartment. And he come out of the apartment, and <clears throat> the lights was off, and he fell down the stairs. Okay. Um, so they say that L the apartment people say LG and E pulled the meter by mistake. Okay. Okay. Whose responsibility would it be? on this part. I mean, my son has been to, you know, went to therapy and everything else. Well, there's a Which lot of, back. there's a lot of issues to look at on this particular uh, situation, Cindy. One, why did LG&E pull it? Um, if they did so wrongfully, there could be some liability on LG&E. Uh, it could be some liability on the apartment complex if uh, for some reason they didn't pay their bill or something to that effect. So. You need to look at those two situations. Also, it's whether or not uh, your son, you know, knew that the lights were out and uh, fell because of that, or if uh, they weren't, he didn't know that he was in, you know, when it was light, then he came back out and they were dark. So there's a lot of issues to look at. I can't say just from that little bit of uh, scenario that you gave me, but if you uh, call my office uh, later on today, we'll see if we can talk to you about that in a little more detail. Thank you, Sharon, so much for the call. We do appreciate it. And it is interesting. There's all sorts of details and details and details that you have to deal with with every case. Oh, absolutely. And you just, in that particular case, in a car accident, if somebody runs into the back of your car, the liability is relatively clear cut. Right. But in premises liability cases like this, uh, there's no automatic answer that you can give in every case. And you don't know what type of insurance the uh, the apartment complex had, if any, mm -hmm. if the person he was visiting had renter's insurance that might take care of this. So there's a lot of questions uh, in reference to that that need to be looked into. Renter's insurance can cover things like injury, personal injury? Yes. Depend you have hmm. to look at the type of insurance that you have uh, and that you buy. Some, some insurance policies may just be for uh, the contents. Con exactly, the contents and your valuables, but you can get uh, the premises. And it, those type of insurance policies will pay for your medical treatment up to a certain amount usually. Hmm. Okay. All right. So we need to take a real quick break. Yeah. And then when we come back, we're going to talk to uh, Mildred and Cindy. And if you've got a question, we've got plenty of time to get you on. Our telephone number is 571-5263 or 888-800-9283. That's the toll-free number. So stay with us. We'll be right back. We'll see you Had we not acted when we could, I could have died. Yeah. Welcome back to Listens Live. Okay, Cindy, it's your turn now, I promise. <laughs> All this time you've been waiting. Calling from Floyd County. Thank you for waiting so long, Cindy. What's your question for Mike? Morning, Cindy. Sorry you were on the line <laughs> for so long there. Oh, that's okay. Uh, I was in a, uh, actually I saw it saved a child's life. The girl had no insurance. They said she didn't have two nickels rubbed together. Okay. I was taken pretty good care of, but now they're not paying for my medical or my medicine. And the lawyer's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Okay. So, do you have a suggestion? Well, what I, in that I was in the hospital almost six months. Well, in that type of situation, what you really need to do, since this has been going on for a while, it sounds like, um, I would call your lawyer and set an appointment and sit down with him or her and figure out what needs to be done, what can be done, 
and what your options are going to be in this case because if it's it's if you were in the hospital six months you're out now it's long enough where they'll they have an idea of what insurance coverages are there what the assets are on the uh, person that caused this and what your options are as far as getting your medical bills paid and a pain and suffering award for you well i can't even have relations with my husband so oh. it's really well I, I would definitely make that a appointment as soon as possible with your with your attorney and get things worked out so you know what's going on it's your case and you have a right to know what is happening and what they are doing on it okay all right, Cindy, best of luck to you, and thank you so much for the call. Mike Schaefer has taken your calls today. If you've been involved in a personal injury accident, he may be able to help you with a quick phone call. 571-5263 is our telephone number. We'll go right up here to Mildred with a question calling from Bardstown. Hi, Mildred. Hi. Morning, Mildred. Good morning. My father was recently killed June the 12th in a car accident that happened to be my stepmother's fault. Okay. And the insurance company... Um, was saying that uh, there was only a $15,000 minimum, but I think the state of Ohio is the same as Kentucky on that $25,000 minimum thing. Uh, and I was wondering about that, the liability part. Well, if um, I, th I do believe Ohio does have a lower minimum insurance than what uh, Kentucky does, so they may be telling you the exact truth on that. But... Um, you know what you need to do as far as the liability the fact that you know the the wife caused the accident there still can be a collection in a case against her so uh, I would look into that and see what all coverages there are and uh, talk to your attorney about that and uh, see what can be done if you need an attorney in Ohio call our office and we can give you a recommendation for that all right, thank you so much for the call, Mildred. We appreciate it. We're going to go ahead and take a real quick break. Mike can take your calls. I think we've got plenty of time to get you on. If you've got questions about personal injury, 571-5263 is our telephone number. Or if you'd like to get a hold of Mike at his office, he's located at South 7th Street, Suite 200. And the telephone number is 584-9511 or 855-4-U-R-HURT. Oh, or you can go online. To get more information about Mike's practice, MikeSchaferLaw.com. We'll be right back with Listen's Live. Stay with us. Take my word for it, what you don't know about buying car insurance can hurt you, and you can learn all about it in Mike Schaefer's book that you can access online. You can go to Mike's website, which is MikeSchaferLaw.com, and get the book that way. And you can learn all those things that you need to know so that you make sure that you've got the proper coverage just in case, right? Absolutely. There's only one time to make sure that you protect your family, and that's right now. And if uh, you don't want to think about it, but if you are in an accident and you don't have the proper insurance, you know, that's your fault and it could be financially devastating to your family. Well, you really bring up an, a good point, too, because a lot of, of uh, women that are working don't really consider themselves you know in in that equation right and of course if they're bringing in an income and they're doing a lot of other things too right. that's that's worth a lot so you need to make sure that you've got the proper coverage absolutely for the family or for single moms or single dads whatever but the coverage needs to be there if you are the breadwinner all right okay we're going to get back to your calls we've got Jeffrey hanging on the line right now hey Jeffrey did you have a question for Michael yes I do okay go ahead Hi, All right. Uh, hi, Michael. What can we do for you? All right. My question is uh, a quick, easy question here. Uh, I was uh, in a head-on collision hit uh, by another driver. It was their fault. Okay. And uh, when I when I had the collision, the, the car was in the dealership's name. Okay. They never transferred it over. Well, um, two months after I had the car wrecked, they tried to transfer the vehicle over. So, of course, I'm getting ready to court and all that on it. But, I mean, my question is you is uh, who's liable are they liable since they tried to transfer it after the car wreck I mean because it was in their name when I had the car wreck well at this point in time I'm, I'm assuming the car was totaled if they didn't have it transferred their insurance should take care of, take care of it uh, the other thing is whether if you had insurance on it at the time even though it wasn't transferred to your name that would be a situation where the two insurance companies would be fighting about uh, you know who who pays for the 
the uh, damage to the vehicle if, in fact, um, there wasn't liability insurance on the uh, person that caused the accident. So, you know, a few, a few more questions to ask in reference to that, but you're, you're uh, probably one insurance company or the other is going to end up paying for it. Right. So, is it, does that answer your question? Yeah, or? yeah, it does. I was also an innocent bystander, too, in the vehicle. Okay, so, you, so luckily you weren't injured then, right? It was the other driver's fault. So, okay. Right. Okay, well. Oh, I was injured horribly. Yes, injured horribly. Uh, oh. Broke ribs, collarbone, uh, broken arm. Okay. All kind of stuff. Well, in, in that in that case, I mean, you should, you know, your attorney, I'm sure, is talking about what insurance coverage the dealership had to make sure that uh, you are compensated for that. So. You know. Right. Well, what he's trying to do is try to find the other driver that hit us also as well and try to maybe pursue them too, but uh, trying to find them is like trying to find a needle in a haystack. Right. So how uh, do you go about trying to find them? Well, I, I looked through the police reports and tried to find the address and stuff. So, Well, there, there, it just depends on how much information. There are uh, uh, detectives and search services that I'm sure your attorney knows about. Sounds like he or she is on the right track and doing everything that needs to be done to take care of you in this particular case. Jeffrey, best of luck to you. We do appreci appreciate the call. We're going to um, see if we can get here to Samuel real quick, maybe, before okay. we... Okay. Uh, maybe... Samuel? Hey, Samuel, you with me? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Just stay right there. Samuel right. disappeared. You know, we'll get him here in a second. Okay, um, so if I, once again, learn nothing else, I'm going to call my insurance agent as soon as I get off the air here, Absolutely. and I'm going to make sure that she has... I'm going to make sure that I know exactly what coverage I've got, what kind of coverage it is. Absolutely, and how much coverage you have. Okay. From my, from my perspective, for the amount that you're going to end up paying, because it's not going to be near as much as you think. It's mm -hmm. not going to go up 10 times because you raise the insurance, but I would have at least a $300,000 policy okay. for uninsured and underinsured motorist benefits. That'll mean you'll raise your liability coverage, but that way you're going to be protected should you be injured in an accident, there'll be at least $300,000 to cover your pain and suffering and medical bills and any lost wages that you have. Okay. okay. And right. you can raise it up from that. It just depends on how much you want to pay on a, uh, you know, for your premiums, but at least 300000 is what I would recommend. A minimum. Okay. All right, let's see if we can get to Samuel here real quick before you have to break. Hey, Samuel? Yes? Did you have a quick question for Mike Schaefer? Uh, yes. What, what happened is uh, I got a five-year-old son, and uh, our uh, family for, a doctor prescribed a medication for him, and it was like five times the doses he should have had, and wow. our former, family pharmacist didn't catch it and, and give it to us that way, and it put my son in a cold series hospital for about five days. And they think he had a um, mild stroke and some uh, seizures. And even now, he's just now starting to get his uh, uh, bowel movements under control again. Oh. And he still talks with a slur and stuff and everything. And we ain't heard nothing from nobody at all or nothing yet. This happened probably like in the last, you know, three weeks. Well, you're probably not going to hear from anybody in reference to those cases. So I would call, you know, give us a call so we can talk about what your options are. Uh, on any type of medical malpractice case, uh, pharmaceutical case against the pharmacy, the statute of limitations is only one year, and in most instances, those cases are not settled without going to court on them. So I don't think you're going to hear from anybody, and I would definitely get somebody in your corner that can fight for you in this particular situation, and I hope your son uh, makes a full recovery there. Yeah, absolutely. And that is the sort of thing that you can take care of as well. Yes, ma'am. Okay. All right, Samuel, thank you so much for the call. We do appreciate it. We'll go ahead and take a really quick break. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Mike, thank you so much for coming in today. Well, thanks for having me again, Cindy. I had a, a good time, and hopefully we gave some good information, and people will be calling their insurance agents and telling them that an attorney told them to call and uh, make sure they have the right coverage to protect their families. Okay, and if you want to get a hold of Mike, if you didn't get to him today, 440 South 7th Street is the location of his office. It's in Suite 200, 584-9511 is the telephone number, or 855-4-U-R-HURT. Or you can always go online, MikeSchaeferLaw.com, and that's also where you can access his book, 
What you don't know about buying car insurance can hurt you, so it's really good information. Have a great day, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us for Listen Live. We'll see you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Lori Lyle with Wave Free News at Noon. Wave 3 News at 11. Covering Kentucky and